First of all, um, these treatments are not harmful. And there are plenty of studies, and myself as a person who's taking one of them, as proof. Estradiol, it's a hormone therapy. I actually take it for menopause, too much information for the body today. But that estradiol is also used by folks who are transgender. I can tell you it is medically necessary in my case. Otherwise, we would see a different senator. <laughs> but it's also medically necessary for people who have gender dysphoria. And there are no harmful side effects, no irreversible things that happen. There are many medical organizations that support the use of these treatments. Now, the, the most, I, I wanna spend a little time on the fiscal note and the implications there. Because the fiscal note is kind of blurry on what it would cost and it even says we might save money. But I, I believe it is my opinion that, we, that the cost that's not included in the fiscal note is the potential for litigation. And I'm gonna give you some context of why I believe that's a really important um, absence in this fiscal note, okay? First of all, House Bill 668 violates section 1557 of the Affordable Care Act. That act outlines the federal expectations and the prohibition of discrimination. You cannot discriminate based on race, sexual orientation, gender identity, any, any class, and deny medical care. And that's what this does. It doesn't say we're gonna take away my estradiol for hormone therapy for menopause, but it says we're not gonna let you use it in a certain class of people. That population can't use it. That's discrimination. And, and here's why I think there is a possibility of more litigation. There's a track record, right? Let's think about every bill this body has passed that deals with this issue is in court. The transgender birth certificate, that ban racked up $320,000 of litigation fees. And we did that in the face of the 2018 federal decision that found that preventing people from changing their birth certificate violated the Equal Protection Clause of the United States Constitution. Number one. Number two, Hecox versus Little. That's the transgender athlete bill that was House Bill 500 enacted in 2020. That's still being litigated. And a federal appeals court upheld an injunction blocking that law. The AG is still incurring expenses on that case. I need to do a public records request and see where we're at, but that, that's a lot of money. Number three, MH versus Jepson. These are two trans uh, women who sued Medicaid for denials of gender affirming care. Again, the attorney general is invo involved in that case and has hired outside counsel. And we know outside counsel is probably upwards of $400 an hour. That's a lot. Number four, Poe versus Labrador. This is the one that criminalizes gender affirming care, House Bill 71, still hung up in court. This is the one where um, that ban actually was uh, brought forward and the judge said, we are gonna put a stay on that so people can still get medical care and it's likely to be unconstitutional. <clears throat> Number five, Roe versus Critchfield. This is the bathroom bill, Senate Bill 1100. That's stuck in court battles as well, racking up more and more attorney's fees. So just like all of those, House Bill 668 is in the family of bills that clearly violates the 14th Amendment Equal Protection Clause. And as somebody has stayed in this body, the Constitution is here for the minority, not the majority. And that's what we're talking about. This bill targets a population of people in the minority, people who are transgender. And this is a bill that cuts off a drug treatment plan afforded to cisgender people, not transgender people. And when the state chooses to do that, that's discrimination. Now, the other, the other thing I wanna note about this fiscal note, as I actually contacted Medicaid and I said, you know, 
tell me what this, let's, let's just take estradiol for an example. This is widely used. How much does that cost? And annually, that drug for an individual would be $198, <clears throat> but that doesn't include the 26% rebate that we get from pharma. So now we're down to 150. And based on the research we did last year when House Bill 71 was passed, we have way fewer than 500 people in this state that it even affects for transgender care. Out of 2 million people, we're talking about denying care for potentially 500 people. State employees, their kids, Medicaid recipients, any, anyone the public money touches. And so if you do the math on that, we're talking about $35,000 a year probably. And, and against the potential for millions of dollars in litigation. Now, which bill do we want to pay? Which is the responsible conservative bill to pay? And it's not only the responsible fiscally, it's the one that's human. This care is necessary. I spoke to somebody after committee. I'm not going to talk about committee, Mr. President. Good. <clears throat> it was after committee, I, I called her on the phone and I said I was deeply moved and I'd like to hear more. And she talked about how depressed she was and suicidal until she got the kind of care she needed for her dysphoria. I mean, close to death. But now she's, well, who knows about this bill passing, but now she's happy, she's employed, she works for Head Start. Her life is going the right direction. She even said, I'm thinking of getting a state employee's position, so maybe I can stay in Idaho and maybe I would get insurance. But now all that's changed. And now she's looking for another place to live out of state which quite frankly is happening widely. I don't know about you, but you better believe in my district, I'm getting call and email after email from people that can't take it anymore because they can't get their health care. That's wrong. I think by limiting these treatments by the particular class we've isolated, again, discrimination, it's inhumane, and as a state government, we want to send a message to our state employees and the people on Medicaid, whoever it is, you're worth something. Not we're going to deny you care, send you into fits of depression and suicide. It's a small tab to pay. And, that's, and we should do that. I am asking you today to vote against this, even if it's just the financial responsibility to our state to keep us out of litigation costs and racking up more bills that will have to get more money in the Legal Defense Fund and have to pay our Attorney General. And more importantly, because it's the human and compassionate and the right thing to do. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Is there further debate? To debate the bill, you have the floor. So my uh, really good friend right now, he has a, his, his wife's pregnant and she has a, a blood clot in her leg and they're trying to determine the best uh, treatment for that. But that uh, a blood clot could lead to someone dying uh, as blood clots do if they're not taken care of. That's something that's medically necessary. So I find it, um, here I am with those words again. I don't understand uh, how, how removing the genitals of a child would ever be medically necessary. A blood clot in your leg is medically necessary. A broken femur bone that needs to be fixed. Heart surgery, we could go on and on. Those are medically necessary. But um, saying that the human compassionate thing to do is to chop, uh, to chop off a kid's genitals, that, that doesn't sit well with it. Senator. President, I object. But you, I think you've made your point, and uh, this is a sensitive subject, and so proceed as if it were. It is a sensitive subject, yeah, but it, I mean, the reality of what we're talking about is what I just said. So uh, I'll be a no on this, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. 
Is there further debate? Mr. President. Senator Wintrow, for what purpose do you rise? Debate the second time. Does anyone wish to debate the bill for the first time? Now, it's been my experience that when we go around the second time that we tend to set aside the rules of decorum and debate. And so, Senator, I'm recognizing you with that understanding. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just want to address something I think is very important about this bill and that was brought up by the, um, the senator from 13. Number one, we do not do medical surgeries on children in the state. In fact, I don't know one physician in Idaho that does those on adults. People have to go to Salt Lake City in our neighboring state of Utah. <clears throat> but I will tell you what surgery does occur in the state and is carved out lawfully in the law. We have arbitrarily determined that if a baby is born with ambiguous genitalia, we will allow the parents to choose the gender and in that case, conduct a surgery on healthy human tissue because the parents fears, the parents apprehensions, not the child's. Now, perfectly healthy babies that are intersex or have this condition are operated on all the time, right here in Boise, Idaho, in St. Luke's. So again, we are picking and choosing when we feel comfortable about the surgery and who it goes to, because it is about matching traditional dominant gender roles that are, regardless of what this body says, are socially constructed and not clearly assigned to a sex. And sex and gender are on a continuum, whether we want to believe that or not, in all species. So, again, I've, I vehemently ask you to vote against this. It is unconstitutional. It is discriminatory. It is unnecessary. And I will tell you, the woman I spoke to on the phone, she absolutely said it was medically necessary for her life. Because the cost on this fiscal note is not just the litigation. It could be the cost of somebody's life. I implore you, think about the human beings that we are talking about. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you.